Hi guys, how are you all doing? I hope all of you are doing well and all of you are safe with your families at home. Well, this of course is the advisor section. This of course is the advisor videos. And as I mentioned before, uh, this is a section where we will talk only in English for the benefit of our viewers in the, the southern part of India and the northeast part of India because a lot of you write to me from uh, South India saying that why have I stopped doing English videos. I haven't stopped doing English videos. It's just that I do more Hindi content now and my English reviews are reserved more for the other channel, which is of course the Autopodal channel. Anyways, uh, this is of course in the end of the year. We're coming towards the end of 2020 and thankfully so because this has been a very bad year in more ways than one. Uh, the lockdown, the COVID, the scare, really it's been a very terrible year in uh, more ways than one for almost everyone across the globe and everybody somehow or the other has been affected with this pandemic. So this is one year which will be happy to see the uh, back off. But uh, when you enter 2021, when you enter the new year, uh, there is a host of new car launches, a slew of new car launches which is coming up. And uh, what are those big cars, what are those big launches all about? Today in this video, I'll talk to you about them uh, and I'll tell you the top five or six or seven maybe cars that are coming up in uh, 2021. Now I did a similar video at the Auto Expo in uh, February. You can of course uh, check out the uh, link to that video in the description box or you can of course click here on top of the i button on the banner and you can check out that video. That video has already done seven and a half lakh views. So a lot of people have seen that. But today let's talk about the upcoming cars of 2021. Now the first big launch of uh, next year or the most uh, anticipated launch of next year is going to be the Maruti Suzuki Jimny. Yes, the Jimny was showcased at the Auto Expo. Now the Jimny is uh, a very interesting car. It's not uh, a soft roader. It's not a compact SUV only. It's actually a proper off-roader. It comes with a 4x4 gear. It comes with, uh, you know, off-roading capabilities. It comes uh, with all-wheel drive. It comes with very high ground clearance. And of course, even low range is available on uh, the Jimny. And the Jimny has proven itself in international markets as an off-roader. Uh, in India, this car will arrive on the second uh, half of uh, 2021, uh, the second part of 2021. So expected to be launched around June, July, maybe August. And uh, the pricing is going to be starting from slightly on the steeper side because, of course, it will be a proper 4x4. So the pricing should start from about 10 lakh rupees X showroom and go all the way up to about 13, 14 lakh rupees X showroom. And uh, this car is going to be sold through the Nexa dealerships. It's not going to be sold through the Arena dealerships because of course at Arena, Maruti already has the Vitara Brezza. So if you have two SUVs in the same dealership, then people tend to get confused. That's the thinking behind uh, that logic. Anyways, uh, this car will come with a petrol only engine. There's of course a 1.5, which Maruti will borrow from the CS. Uh, from the Ertiga as well as from the Vitara Brezza and the S-Cross and this 1.5 produces 104 bhp. You can also choose a automatic gearbox along with the manual. The manual of course is a 5-speed unit and the automatic uh, will of course be the 4-speed automatic which Maruti uses again on the CS and the Brezza and the S-Cross. So the gearbox will be shared uh, with this car. Now the good point about uh, the Jimny is of course it's a boxy shape on the outside and uh, it's a car which has loads of personality. We also had on the Auto Expo and really it's a car which stood out at the Auto Expo. It's one of the showstoppers over there. In terms of the looks, it looks boxy, very square and it, of course it has those funky round uh, headlamps. So in terms of the looks, it is a proper off-roader. And uh, if you are a fan of the earlier Maruti Suzuki Gypsy, the original uh, Gypsy, then uh, you'll be a fan of this car as well because as I just said, it will of course be doing proper off-roading duties. Now this car, uh, at this price point will roughly take on the base versions of the Mahindra Thar and uh, with the response that Mahindra has got with the Thar expect a long waiting queue even on the Jimny because people will really be flocking for this car so that's of course the biggest launch of next year and that car will arrive in the second half of 2021. Well the second big launch is going to be from the house of uh, Tata Motors. Now Tata Motors uh, was really very big at the Auto Expo in uh, February 2020 and uh, not without reason because there are a lot of cars to show. And one of the big highlights, of course, at their stand was the Tata HBX, which, of course, is going to be their micro SUV or their SUV which sells below the Sonnet as well as the Nexon. And what is this car all about? Well, essentially, in terms of the space on the inside and in terms of the looks and the dimensions, this car will take on the Mahindra KUV100 and also the Renault Kuwait to a certain extent. So it's a car which will sell from about six and a half, seven lakh rupees X showroom and it'll go all the way up to about 10 lakh rupees, most probably less than that because uh, if it goes to 10 lakh rupees, then it clashes with the next one directly. So expect very magnet-like pricing for it. But of course, it'll be better in terms of the quality, the engine options, as well as the features. 
in terms of looks, this car looks really much on the outside, very boxy, very square. And because of that square design, Tata engineers have really managed to carve out a lot of space on the inside. Uh, we had a small glimpse of the rear seats at the expo of this car. And uh, this car definitely had loads of space on the inside. Now, in terms of engine options, you can choose a 1 litre engine. And uh, there's chances that Tata might also bring in the 1.2 uh, turbo unit from the Nexon. Or maybe the 1 litre engine might be turbo you know, charged and they'll give an option on that as well. In terms of features, again, it won't be a 4x4, but expect uh, all the bells and whistles because Tata really is uh, hitting the ball out of the park with features, with technology, with build quality and with space and looks as well. And the HBX should be a car uh, which arrives in the first quarter of 2021. It should be here by April or May. Well, the third big launch, of course, of next year is also going to be from the house of Tata. And that's, of course, the Gravitas. Now, the Gravitas was officially supposed to come out by December 2020. But because, again, of the lockdown and because of the coronavirus pandemic, Tata had to push their plans. And the car will now come out uh, in the first half, again, March or April, most probably, of 2021. Pricing will be slightly more expensive than the Harrier because the Gravitas is essentially the Harrier with, uh, with the middle row coming with only captain seats. So that is something uh, which gives you extra comfort, extra luxury. And uh, the interiors also will be in uh, beige and cream and not in the dark brown that we saw on the Harrier. In terms of the gearbox, you again get the automatic the manuals. But the big addition on this car will be that the uh, oddly shaped handbrake lever, that will not be there anymore. In its place, you'll get an electric uh, parking brake. You'll get a button over there. That'll be a big addition. And Tata Motors is saying that they'll bring in some more features to give it a more premium feel and look. And most probably, a petrol engine will also debut on this car. And now that's uh, something which details are still very sketchy about, but uh, it could mean the pipeline. It could arrive on the Gravitas when it comes out in March or April this year. In terms of pricing, as I said, it'll be slightly more expensive than the Harry about a lakh rupees more because it'll be more exclusive in more uh, premium terms and uh, the interiors also will be a little more premium. So that's another car which is definitely worth the wait if in the market for a luxury liner, a luxury car and it gives you an option against the Innova Crista and the MG Hector Plus as well. Now what is the other car uh, that is going to be very important and uh, is going to be a showstopper? Well, the Ford EcoSport, which comes with a new update, is going to be a car which people are waiting for. And the update is not going to be only in terms of looks. I remember Ford is already tied up with Mahindra. And this car now will get Mahindra's 1.2 turbocharged petrol engine, which will in all probability replace the current 1.5 petrol. And again, this engine is going to be good in terms of reliability, in terms of economy, because the current 1.5 isn't good in terms of economy. A lot of people complain about the fuel economy of the EcoSports petrol. And uh, the answer to uh, you know those problems will be Mahindra's 1.2 petrol unit turbocharged, of course, about 110 or 120 bhp, and engine options also uh, in terms of the gearboxes will improve. Uh, the diesel also is going to get an update. Most probably, it'll get an automatic finally, something that a lot of people have been waiting for and telling Ford to do. And in terms of looks, well, I'm not sure what uh, Ford can do now because they've already changed the looks of this car once. So uh, how will they improve the looks again? That's something which uh, we'll have to wait and watch. But yes, uh, Ford is planning to update it and the Echo Sport is going to be there in the market for much longer than you and I think. And uh, it has legions of fans all across India and I'm sure that they're still waiting uh, for this car. Now, with 1.2 engine, prices also will come down a bit because it's a smaller capacity unit. It will be made with uh, Mahindra and Mahindra also uses that engine uh, for some of their cars. So uh, pricing will be more competitive now, something again which will benefit Ford enthusiasts. That's of course uh, another car which is coming. Now, big Launch, of course, next year is going to be from uh, Hyundai, the Creta 7-seater. Yes, uh, Creta is going to get an update and they'll not call it the Creta, they'll call it something else. What will be the name? I don't know as yet because details are still very sketchy. And uh, chances are that the wheelbase of the car will be slightly elongated or, you know, you'll get some overhangs which are elongated a bit. So you'll get more space in the uh, cabin. Already the cabin is a nice and spacious place inside the Creta. But of course, to accommodate that last row, you need a little more space. And uh, that is something that Hyundai engineers are working hard on right now. The engine options remain the same, 1.4 turbocharged petrol, 1.5 uh, diesel and 1.5 petrol. And these engines will remain the same. The pricing also will be marginally higher. Expect prices to go up by about a lakh, which isn't too much considering the size and the shape of the car. And uh, Hyundai plans to launch this car in the second half or just before Diwali next year. So expect uh, this car to launch around August or September. What will the name be? I really don't know, but uh, I'm sure that Hyundai will think of something very cool, just like the car is on the outside. So that's also a car you should wait for, the Creta 7-seater. That's how we're calling it at the moment. Well, so the other big launches are going to be from the house of Mahindra. 
Now Mahindra was a little subdued this year uh, because of course uh, they didn't have any big launches planned. They did plan some launches but again uh, they got delayed and the big launch of course is going to be the XV500, the new version of the car which will get an updated engine, new interiors completely and of course a new styling on the outside and prices are going to be very competitive because remember the XV500 not only competes uh, with the likes of the Tata Harrier as well as Jeep Compass but also with the Hyundai Creta and the Kia Celta so the pricing is going to be very keen and expect the Mahindra XUV to start from about 12 lakh rupees, 13 lakh rupees and go all the way up to about 20 lakh rupees uh, for the fully loaded 7 seater automatic version of the car and of course you get a diesel as well as a petrol engine option uh, with the XUV 500 now. Uh, what is also important in the Mahindra range is going to be the EV version of the XUV 300. Yes of course we saw this version at the Auto Expo and uh, it's a good car in terms of the sales figures for Mahindra in the normal uh, petrol and diesel versions and Mahindra of course now wants to bring in the EV version because it has to compete with the Tata Nexon EV. Now uh, where the Nexon EV just falls back is in terms of range because the Nexon EV has a range of about 300 odd kilometers. This one from Mahindra will have a range of around 400 odd kilometers which is really pretty good in terms of uh, people who travel a lot and sometimes who travel on the highways as well. So in terms of uh, range anxiety that is something that you can forget. It's not going to be as cheap as the Tata Nexon, not as a competitive price rather and prices are going to be a little more expensive. So expect the base versions to start from about 14 or 15 lakh rupees and the top of the line version to go to about 18 or 19 or 20 lakh rupees for the XUV 300 and the XUV 300 already is an expensive car so the EV version has to be a little more expensive because of course the technology and the battery pack and the you know voltage and everything on the uh, Mahindra XUV 300 will be slightly higher than it is on the Tata Nexon and Mahindra will not just end it there they'll also launch the EV version of the KUV100 and this car has a much lesser range than the uh, XUV300 but uh, because of that it's also very competitive in terms of pricing. Now the range of this car is under 200 kilometers uh, which you might say well it's decent for everyday travel you know maybe that's how much you travel in a week from office to home and uh, back and forth and uh, it's quite practical as well because it's a nice and compact shape uh, and the controls are also light of the regular car uh, but the good point is the price is going to be very keen and Mahindra is planning to uh, start it at about 8 lakh rupees or 8.5 lakh rupees and might go up to about 10 lakh rupees which really means that this will finally be an EV that everybody can afford or a large majority of people can truly afford. So they are democratizing EVs in India with the KUE 100. In terms of the looks it will be more or less the same slight change on the outside and all these cars will be launched in the second half of the year. So expect uh, the Mahindra XUV 500 to launch around June. Uh, the XUV 300 EV to launch around uh, August September and uh, the EV version of the KUE 100 will also launch towards the second half or towards the end of 2021. So that's uh, what Mahindra is planning. Apart from that uh, the big launch uh, next year is going to be the Skoda Vision IN concept that we saw again just before the expo or just around the expo in February 2020. Now what is this car all about? Well essentially it uh, seems like a credit arrival in terms of the dimensions, in terms of size, in terms of shape and it also has very similar internal dimensions in terms of shape and size and uh, being a Skoda means that quality levels will be very high. The engine specifications still aren't out completely so we don't know what kind of engines this car will come powered with but you can uh, estimate that this car will get uh, a diesel and a petrol of course. Uh, the current 1 litre turbocharged engines which uh, are doing duty on the Skoda Rapid, the VW Polo and the Vento could uh, have their presence on this car and there might be some diesel version of this car also which is launched because diesel still has a strong market share in the market and Hyundai has already shown us that with the Creta uh, because the Creta about 50 or 60 percent of Creta sales are for the diesel that's what the company claims. So uh, because of the diesel dilemma Skoda will not leave out uh, a diesel engine and they'll definitely bring something in when and how they'll bring it we don't know but this car will come towards the end of uh, 2021 maybe around September or October the last quarter of next year. And the good point about this car again as I just said is going to be space, quality, features and of course uh, the styling. I think the styling wise this car is really very good. In terms of pricing expect the base versions to cost around 9, 10, 11 lakh rupees and the top of the line versions to go about to 15 or 16 lakh rupees. So the pricing is going to be very competitive because Skoda with uh, their new found uh, you know uh, VW range or the upgrade VW range has seen that uh, good pricing and keen pricing does manage to get good sales going. So they will price this car very well and it's a car which will launch towards the end of next year.
Well, one last car before I end this video review is uh, a car which needs special mention. That car, of course, is the Maruti Suzuki Swift. Yes, the Swift will get an update now because it has been in the market for about three years now and it needs an update compared to its rivals. Uh, it'll get new front uh, bumpers, a new grille, uh, new fog lamps as well as slightly tweaked headlamps. So it won't be a big change. It'll be a MMC, what company internally call it MMC or a minor model change. And of course, uh, the entire uh, outlook of the car will be slightly updated. The interiors also will get some sprucing up. But the biggest change will be that this car will now get Maruti's uh, acclaimed hybrid tech technology. And of course, this is mild hybrid tech. Uh, you get a battery pack at the, you know, behind the back seats. You of course get uh, some technology in the engine which gives it start-stop capabilities. And all these things mean that the prices do go up slightly, but you also get added fuel economy. So expect the additional fuel economy to be about 10 or 15% more than the current petrol version. And why is Maruti doing this? Well, simply because a lot of people are saying that uh, they've removed diesel technology and their cars aren't as fuel efficient. You know, we wanted more fuel efficiency and stuff like that. So Maruti is being very smart. They're launching this car with a mild hybrid uh, tech pack. And of course, that'll bump up fuel economy. Already, the petrol version is quite good in terms of uh, refinement and economy, but expected to go up a notch or two with uh, this new car. And that'll, of course, come in the later part of next year, around uh, September, October again, because by that time, uh, the Swift will be almost four years old in the Indian market. So expect it uh, to be a car which again bows you with its styling, driving dynamics, as well as refinement. And prices are going to be slightly higher by around 20, 30,000 rupees for this updated new Swift. Anyways, this was my brief list of uh, cars which are going to be launched next. There's also a host of other cars which will be coming, a lot of cars from MG, uh, updates from other car manufacturers. But of course, if I include everything in this video, it'll become very long and you'll end up becoming very bored with it. So we'll make another video very soon for you before you make a buying decision. Well, if you have made it thus far uh, on this video, then it's a small request to please do subscribe to this channel. Also, if you like the video, do leave a like. And if you didn't like it, uh, you can also put a thumbs down and you can write uh, your feedback in the comment section below. If I like it, I might give it a heart. And once again, thanks a lot for watching this video. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now and thanks for watching.